another episode of You, you Didn't, Didn't Ask. Ask with Frankie and Tish. All right, folks, I know you don't want to sit here and listen to us talk. So we are going to go ahead and introduce in. our fantastic <laughs> guest, Miss Bone, Mariana Saldana. Yay. Thank you so much for joining Yay. us. Hola. Thank Yay. you for having me. We are thrilled to have you. And like I said, you look amazing, fantastic, gorgeous. <laughs> up for you today <laughs> <laughs> i'm feeling the love let yes. me tell you <laughs> i'm thrilled honored yes absolutely and um like i said our our guests or our listeners don't want to hear us doing all the talking they want to hear you so we're going to jump right into mm-hmm. it um and i want to ask i know everyone's gonna want to know this too what which is what got you into synth pop well, you know, I have always loved music. I grew up around music. Mm-hmm. My family is from Mexico. The radio was always on at grandma's house on the weekends. You know, we would just listen mm-hmm. to, you know, I was always really attracted to the beats. I remember mm-hmm. being very like, oh, is this a cumbia? Is this merengue? Or is this, you know, and I was yes. at a very young age, I was able to decipher like the different types of styles of, of Spanish music. And uh, I just loved music. And then later on, like in art school, I was starting to do more like creative uh, performance art kind of stuff. And I found out about like samplers and synthesizers. Oh, yes. Yeah. It was amazing. Like um, synthesizers are just so magical, you know, they're so beautiful and so many different sounds that you can make. And, you know, it just really makes a, a different part of your brain work. It always turned me on in that way. So um, what was it like as far as like being a digital recording artist? Like how is it like now versus like when you first started? Oh my God, I'm so grateful for now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for now the way it is now because I actually have a producer that I work with who does all of the hard work for me when I'm ready to record. But I remember back in the day, you know, we had our, we'd get our gear, you know, always secondhand. You know, I think I had a mm-hmm. mic that I got found at a pawn shop or sorry, thrift store and um, we would actually use toys too, like toys with microphones to make weird sounds. Oh and, yeah. You know, we were just creative because we didn't really, I never studied music, uh, at a school. I always oh, approached wow. it like art, like a performance art. It's gotta be kind of weird and kind of sound off. And, and, you know, that's what I really love about, you know, synthesizers and drum machines, like the old way of doing stuff, CV gate, it's not perfectly timed. So, um, I used to record on a four track back in the day and I never mastered it, but it would come out sounding kind of weird and kind of, you know, moody and stuff. So now I have uh, a much easier time. I work with an actual producer with like very nice gear, very nice microphone, and we're able to really execute whatever ideas really quickly. And so I appreciate Mm -hmm. that. And also it's like now, you know, I'm able to work with people all over the country in the world you know like um it's just amazing what the internet has yes you know i grew up you know we had pagers and stuff yes 911 call me back yeah Yeah. (laughs) exactly time and i still haven't wrapped my head around um you know all the technology that there is out there now it's changing so fast but i so rapidly yes there's just so many different uh, places to learn and so many people to learn from I think it's really beautiful mm-hmm. some you know and it, it, it can be too much at times I feel like we try to cram in too much instead of just like geeking out over like a little keyboard when you know you're yeah. young mm-hmm. <laughs> attractions. the only thing on tv is whatever's on the program you know like when mash comes on you know you turn it off and play with your keyboard <laughs> yes you yeah. know uh, times are really different now, but you know, it's, it's a blessing. I think I'm, I'm really glad. Yeah. I, I think that one, one key thing that I want to like kind of emphasize too, is that you said how quickly you can get your stuff out there. Mm-hmm. It, it's so much different. It's almost like, you know, instant. And then the, uh, with the ever changing technology too, there must be like so much that's being introduced every day. That could be so exciting to like help you change your sound or sample new sounds and, Absolutely. And there's so many clones now of old synthesizers and drum machines. Yes. That, you know, we're just, you, you couldn't get them, you know, or they're really old. And then the old ones that you do have, you know, they always need repairs. There's all these new clones that you can get. I mean, obviously they're not the original, but they're, you know, a flavor of the original. 
And I think that that's really cool that that they've made it accessible. They're more affordable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, you know, people got to kind of just start somewhere. You know what I mean? It You don't yes. you don't start with, you know, the Rolls Royce of music equipment. You start with something small and then you just kind of go from there and build your sound. And, and yeah, out, exactly. You know? Like you said, toys and whatever that you could. Yeah, so, absolutely. yeah. And then you move your way up. And since we're talking about sound, can you tell us how growing up in Houston influenced your sound? Well, like I was mentioning before, you know, uh, I grew up not necessarily in a musical family, but a family that was always listening to music. And mm -hmm. so for me, I, you know, the musicians that I love, you know, I'm like an old lady. I love like Juan Gabriel. I love Rocio Durcal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love all these old Mexican mm -hmm. masters, these Spanish singers. I love, you know, <laughs> we were singing a Luis Miguel song they put on a track the other day at my show in Denver and you know all the Latinos started singing it and uh, you know oh, that's awesome. and, you know all these different um it it just there was always music around you know it always was kind of like a backdrop of whatever was going on and I think especially growing up like in the 80s and 90s you know the radio was really important it wasn't like music is today where you have everything on demand at your fingertips yes. yeah yeah it's like you're listening to the radio or you're listening to that mixtape that someone made, yes. you, you know what I mean? Or I was just talking to my buddy the other day about, you know, our voicemails back then, we'd, you know, get next to the song, yes. like, you know, let the song play for like good five or six seconds. And be like, hey, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, a message at the beep or whatever, you know, music was really part of, part of just growing up, you know, in, in, mm -hmm. in school also, you know, there was always people that had boom boxes and stuff. Yes. Everybody was always listening to the latest track. And I remember um, we used to do like a lot of dance routines and stuff like that. Copy the music videos, my cousins and I. Yes. Together and just play that music video over and over and learn the dance routines and stuff. And, you know, I thought I was going to be Paula Abdul one day. <laughs> <laughs> it just, you know, we always just. I don't know. We always just had wild dreams, you know? <laughs> yeah. It was interactive in a different way. It was like, you had to work really hard for mm -hmm. it. You know, you mentioned the boom box and I remember putting a tape in there and, and trying to record the song on the radio so that you could hear it over and over again. Making a tape to try to get all together the songs that you right. like together. That was right. hard and too. Then, you know, late at night, the radio DJ would then start like mixing it, you know, and doing all sorts of stuff. Yes. You know? <laughs> I was trying to record the song and now it's like a mega mix, you know? Yes. But and sometimes yeah. you had those mega mixes recorded. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it would end up happening. So, yeah. So uh, are there any influences that people would not expect to that, that I guess, cultivated your, your flavor? <laughs> <laughs> now I was mentioning before, like uh, Rocio Durcal and, and Juan Gabriel, really, I love that shit. My boyfriend knows, <laughs> you know, when it's on, I'm singing in the house, you know, we're, it's like, I like to put it on Saturdays and listen to my Mexican music. I love flans. You know, um, I actually love some tracks from Menudo. Oh my gosh, girl. Daddy, Daddy is my fucking <laughs> jam, okay? I feel um, you. A few of their records, nobody can believe me when I when I pull them out at parties. So. Seriously, still, I'm like, add a little spice to your life. Like, I'm right there. I got you. Yeah, you know, Súbete a mi moto. You know, I love that. And, you know, the album covers were really interesting. They're like these young boys in these, like, wet leather jackets. And they're all, like, super hyper-sexualized, too. But, of course, not how they do to right. women. But, you know, it's it's interesting to see what has happened throughout time with those types of things. But yeah, man, I loved Flans and um, I loved Menudo and Magneto, you know, that cover of Vuela, Vuela that they did, Vuela, Vuela, you know, Voyage, Voyage. No, I don't. I don't know that one. For that one day. It's so good. They dance so good. They're on top of a building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. literally going to go find it right now. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Magneto, Vuela, Vuela. Okay, I'm literally, it's in the mind files and I'm going to look yeah. it up right after this. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about all your, you know, Latin influences and you being Latina. Mm -hmm. Do you have any words of wisdom for any little girls that are, you know, watching you and listening to your music and one day want to follow in your footsteps? My children, um, I love, there is nothing more 
uh, impactful to me as an artist than to see like little girls dancing to like Machina or whatever. It always makes me cry. <laughs> oh my God, me pongo a llorar. Um, it fills my heart with so much love and joy. Like I feel like my life mission is accomplished when I see Aww. the stuff. Yeah. But you know what? I'm going to tell them what my dad tells me. Echale chingazos. That's what he tells me every time. Just do it and believe in yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was that little girl one day too. I was that little girl singing and dancing and, you know, just, just enjoying that artistic side of life where, you know, I know it sounds cliche, but like you dance like no one is watching you. Yes, I know. Yes. At one point, everyone's going to be watching you. You know what I mean? And you just have to be comfortable and love yourself and take care of yourself and keep bad people away from yes. you. Mm -hmm. People who always try to put you down or don't believe in you or try to crush your dreams. Those people are not going to make it to the finish line with you. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I love that mentality too. Just totally. be the winner that you, you know, you are. Uh, believe in yourself. Yeah. Even if nobody else does, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you have to be the one who believes in yourself. And you know what? We are all stars. We can all make it to whatever dreams we have. You know what I mean? It all begins mm. in here and in here. And you I got just goosebumps when you said that. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, after that beautiful thing that you said, I really hate to like switch up the topic on you, <laughs> but like we kind of wanted to like, you know, our, our podcast yeah, is we're, we're macabre. We are dark ghost, ghost hunters. Yeah. True crime. We, we cover a lot of like spooky yeah. topics. So within yeah. that, like, uh, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, oh, I, mean, I had a feeling. All the time. <laughs> absolutely. And you know what? I've always believed in ghosts. Ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot's my favorite. You know, <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> I always have. And I, I don't know if it's like growing up Latina, um, you know, yes. it was part of our culture. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like. Oh, you know, La Bruja or this or El Fantasma, La Llorona. La Llorona, yep. Mm -hmm. I know about La Llorona when I was like four or five. And they're <laughs> like, you know, she's this ghost. It's going to, if you're crying, they would tell me, if you're crying on like Tuesdays or Thursdays, and, you know, they would tell me whatever day it was that I was crying as a child to, you know, keep me in check. Right. <laughs> like, you know, oh, La Llorona, yeah, she comes. If you're crying on Tuesdays and Thursdays, she'll come. <laughs> And then I'd be looking out my window in the backyard like, I think I saw her. <laughs> um, absolutely. You know, I pray to my ancestors all the time, all the time, you know, give me strength, whatever. Give me guidance, you know, ilumina el camino. You know, I, I am definitely a big, big believer in um, everything after life paranormal all of it I love uh, it. yeah I love that I mean we were always too because mm -hmm. of how we were raised I mean you had La Llorona that they teased you about but my family would tell me the Chupacabra was going to come get me so like I feel <laughs> you <laughs> I know that <laughs> like so much and I was going to ask you if you had another if you had you just shared that story but if you had like a creepy story that you wanted to share with our listeners you know, I was thinking about it and my my boyfriend and I always joke like look if I saw a ghost you know, I would shit my pants, you know, or like, <laughs> I'm an alien. I would shit my pants right there. We, we were, we're, we're both very into all of those things. Um, I don't feel like I've ever seen a ghost, but when I was growing up, I think we had a ghost in our house. Mm. We were told, um, we had this, uh, curandera come from Mexico and she stayed in our house for about a month and did this beautiful offering, on our dining room table, it was all these beautiful fruits and these beautiful ribbons. And she did kind of like, a, I would say like a limpia, like a cleansing to to our home. And they said, you know, there's a, a teenager trapped here, but, oh, wow. but we did have ghosts in our house, um, in a few different houses growing up. I remember, I remember one time um, in one house that we lived, I would sleepwalk at night. Like, oh, I would, oh wow, yeah outside I woke up outside in my yard and my head was bleeding like up here I don't know what happened but in that home we had a lot of ghosts my mom uh you know my mom was a single mom and she worked really hard and one day she came home to take a nap 
and she was laying down, she had the pillow over her head and she heard somebody come into her room and she thought it was like our nanny, you know? She heard somebody come into her room and walk right next to her bed. And she just figured the nanny was gonna say, hey, you know, my mom is also Mariana. She was like, hey, Mariana, you know, wake up, but never said anything and, and walked out and closed the door. Later, my mom woke up and realized there was nobody in the house. Oh, wow. No one in the house. That house had a lot of weird stuff. And then another house that we moved into, I think, had a teenager. But I never have visually seen a ghost, but I have sensed. like Sensed, mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, even when I was a kid, I remember going um, with my mom to some tiny town in Texas. She was doing some kind of business. I don't know what business she was doing, but it was like an old courthouse or something. And it was in nowhere, Texas. And, uh, you know, she was with the the people doing her documents or whatever she needed to do. And I remember just kind of wandering off into one of the other rooms that was like an auditorium with a piano. And so I sat down at the piano and I was just kind of playing on there. And I remember sensing somebody was watching me. From mm. the and so mm-hmm. I turned around and all I saw was like an American flag standing there. And I And I remember like, not looking away, like staring at it, thinking something is there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Watching me, you know. Um, but I never visually saw anything. So I just kind of I was like, oh well, they don't want me to playing on the piano, you know. And so I got up and I went back to my mom and you know, <laughs> like, watched you on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, message received. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, weird stuff, weird stuff. You know, when I was on tour, I had a really terrible uh like a visitor like this this terrible old man kind of like got in my face in my dream um and then I woke up like crazy and then it happened to my bandmate like the same night and you know so weird wait same dream or like what you dreamt happened dream like um I was laying in bed I was asleep and this you know and when we got into that room it just felt wrong. It was in this tiny mm-hmm. town in Texas. We were on tour with Boy Harsher. And I remember when I walked into the room, I felt like this is a little weird, you know, but you're on tour, you're in so many rooms and you're drinking a lot. This was the only night that we weren't drinking because it was a day off. It was a travel day. And, you know, we were watching Karate Kid or whatever on TV. <laughs> like, all right, let's go to sleep. I'm in my bed and he's in his bed. We closed the curtain. It was beyond pitch black. Beyond. Like. Can't see your hand in front of your face kind of thing. No. It was like negative. Negative space. You know. I I lay down and I was like, okay, this is weird. You know, I went to sleep. And then I felt like this old scary man just come right next to my bed Mm -hmm. and lean over me and like scream in my face. And I was you know and, and my bandmate actually woke me up because he heard me screaming mm. and I was like oh my god I had this terrible dream and da 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 and he was like it's cool you know you're fine so I, I went back to sleep he went back to his his bed and like an hour later he I had to wake him up because he was screaming Whoa. and he was screaming that uh somebody was trying to kill one of somebody in his family um and so it was just like dude this bitch is haunted okay and so we left the lights on we turned the tv on <laughs> we cracked the window open like just waiting for sunrise but i i always travel with like palo santo and yes. I have yeah. oils and stuff so i was like mm, 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 mm. <laughs> you know trying to clean that energy off to, to you know yes. praying and stuff but you know truthfully whenever i pray i always pray to my ancestors like my grandma she was such a tough bitch <laughs> and, uh, you know help me out here because i know she'll kick anyone's ass for me so. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> sweet yeah. yeah that was the perfect end to that story yeah. <laughs> i love that absolutely yes that's like creepiness like the whole like having a similar dream on the same night is like the topper to that that's like that's like genuine proof that it's like you're not imagining anything once it happens to yeah. somebody else in the room <laughs> it's true and then you know i watch all these paranormal shows and recently maybe two weeks ago i saw an episode and the guy's like i was in this little hotel in this little town in texas and this crazy shit popped off at this hotel and i was like that i bet you that's that same same day. hotel college christian college town and um it was like creepy already you know because it was all like you know it, we rolled in it was like 
nine o'clock at night, there was not a soul to be found. All the mm. laundry manicured, the sprinklers were on, and it was like a dry county where you couldn't really drink unless you whatever, whatever. Yeah. And it, it was just creepy. Like, uh, you know, like one of those towns in a movie where like your car breaks down and mm-hmm. right. you stop here to fix your tire and then the shit pops off and everyone's a zombie. It was like that, basically. I've been in a town like that where you know people are inside buildings and no one's outside and you can tell they're all watching you. you know? Like, does anyone live here? <laughs> it reminded me of like the X-Files or something. Like one of those, you know. Also her yeah. jam. Yeah, I love the X-Files. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> I'm like thinking like, yeah, like Twilight Zone type. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Like, reality for sure. Okay, so I'm going to switch it up here again, because that's what I like to do. (laughs) (laughs) And now we're going to go into World Goth Day. Yes, May 6th. Yes. Yes. World Goth Day. (laughs) Yes, at the Empress Theater. Tease Market. Yes, the Menagerie. (laughs) They're so awesome. And they put on great events. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you, like, since they told us that you were going to be performing, we're like, okay, we are staying. We are watching all the bands. Like, we are going to light it up. Like, we are so excited. Mm -hmm. And we're wondering if you've ever, you know, done a goth event or like a World Goth Day type event. You know, not specifically a World Goth Day, but I do perform um, at a lot of festivals. And, you know, it's mostly a goth crowd. So everybody's looking real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I'm expecting that for World Goth Day, too. They're having a fashion show. and Mm -hmm. Yes, there's like Mm -hmm. a fashion show. There's drag queens and there's a market. I hope I don't spend all my money at the market. (laughs) You might. It looks like there's so many vendors. It's going to be hard not to spend all your money at the market. Just warning because all the artists there are incredible. Um, yeah. And I mean, you said you you performed at Goth Festival, so this will be a little bit different for you. I hope exciting because this is your first time doing something like this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited. I'm always down and the venue looks beautiful. Empress mm-hmm. Theater. Gorgeous. Yes. Like a historic theater. I love that about California. There's so many beautiful old like Art Deco. Yeah. Theaters. You know, they're probably haunted too, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's so, exactly what we were thinking. Yeah. There's our <laughs> fans there ready, waiting for us. You're going to see us with our Palo Santo. And... <laughs> I'm super excited. And I understand that the music is kind of early in the day. Um, I think five to eight. Is that yes. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So it's like a, like a, afternoon what time does it start like 11 or something yeah it'll be wonderful i'm very excited i've played san francisco a few times and um i've never been to vallejo so i'm excited yeah i can't wait to see you perform live yes i'm gonna bring it just for you yay (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna be like yeah she's singing to me (laughs) yes i am (laughs) It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm very excited. And the other bands look great, too. I'm really excited to meet them. And, you know, they yeah, did yeah, too. They're super they're cool. Yeah, really nice today. Um, or, So do you have any us. upcoming projects or anything that you want to share that are in the yeah. works? Um, I've got um a new album that's going to be coming out at the end of the year. I haven't announced it yet. Ooh. Here, it, here first, then. <laughs> and then also uh, there's a new remix album coming out. Uh, for a song that I did. So I'm real excited about that and collaborating with some amazing artists, uh, European and American. And, you know, it's just staying real busy, working with yes. a lot of great friends. I'm, I'm lucky that I have a lot of wonderful, talented, mm-hmm. talented friends that I get to work with on on projects. And Which know, is what... Oh, I was going to say, which is why we're even more honored that you yeah. made time for us because we know how busy your schedule is. Oh, you is are crazy. all over the place making things happen. And we are thrilled I, that you had time to sit down with us. Absolutely. Echandole chingazos like that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. That's awesome. I'm going to start saying that now. <laughs> so um, can you tell our listeners how they can stay connected with you? Yes. The best way to stay connected with me is through my Instagram, Miss Bone. Uh, that's ms period b o a n mm-hmm. and uh you know i look at all my messages so you know if there's ever um anyone trying to get in contact with me just you know send me a message and oh, that's um, cool yeah yeah instagram's the best um and also i'm on twitter as well miss bone as well 
And, uh, but you know, Twitter's kind of too much sometimes for me, you know, I'm old. I don't need all the social media <laughs> interaction. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Instagram is the best way to stay in touch with me. We're also on Bandcamp and okay, you know, yeah, YouTube channel uh, up later this year with some new music videos. Ooh, so our listeners, you got to keep an yeah. eye and an ear out for that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So very- definitely follow you on Instagram then. So we'll probably get the scoop then when you're, when it drops, correct? Yes. The yeah. fresh scoop comes from IG for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So everyone heard that, yes. right? <laughs> so follow her now, <laughs> like, and subscribe. <laughs> so was there anything else that you wanted to share with us before we say our goodbyes? Well, you know, I'm just really excited to see everybody at this event. I think it's uh, beautifully curated, you know, drag queens, love drag queens forever and ever. (laughs) And um, all the vendors, you know, I think it's super important to support local vendors and Mm -hmm. artists and, you know, people who are making things, artisans and um, I think it's really important to support everybody and, and, you know, show support for their business and, you know, um, in this day and age, you know, you can buy anything from anywhere. You can order anything from Amazon, but I think it's just so much more special when you buy something yes. you know, mm-hmm. made by someone made with love and intention and not yes. mass produced. And so, you know, it's unique and you have something that, you know, probably nobody else does. I think that's special. So definitely mm-hmm. the menagerie oddities market is about, uh, you know, artists cel- celebrating artists yeah. and supporting the community. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you are going to fit in so beautifully yes. and <laughs> I couldn't be more excited. Um, I keep getting goosebumps. Like just thinking about <laughs> like the I'm excitement level. My, <laughs> I'm sending you my good vibes. Yes. But yes, I feel it. I'm getting them. My little hairs are standing up. <laughs> I'm feeling it through the screen. My grandma, I swear, you know, she's over there. (laughs) My grandma. (laughs) But yes, a pleasure. Thank you so much again for taking your time to Uh, interview. Yes. All the way. Absolutely. I'll see you then, Mason. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. (laughs) Bye. 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 That was so awesome. Mariana was so easy to talk to. It was like talking to a friend. Yeah, I I felt like we had like this instant chemistry and then she's just uh, such an easy interview, such a beautiful person. Yeah, all inside and out. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you two had a lot in common. She was down with X-Files and Bigfoot. I mean, I feel like you guys could hang out on a Saturday night. (laughs) I feel feel like we all grew up like in the same like, like wavelength. (laughs) <laughs> yeah definitely and not if not physically in the same neighborhood then like in some like weird parallel universe in our minds like we grew up in the same neighborhood it was totally awesome and I am so honored that she was able to take her time I mean I know she mm-hmm. has an incredibly yeah. busy schedule so for us to be able to sit down with her was just uh, a blessing honestly yeah. very lucky we are very blessed to have met her and had this opportunity for sure. Yeah, I cannot wait. Cannot wait to see her perform live. Um, cannot wait to give her a hug. I hope we get the opportunity. And um, I just want to say to her, thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. So if you yeah. guys, again, <laughs> have not bought your World Goth Day tickets, then you have some major problems. Who wouldn't want to see this? I know. Who wouldn't want to see this lineup? We've had the opportunity to interview three amazing um, bands or artists from the bands. And it's obvious that it's going to be a party. (laughs) A goth party. So you have to be there. Um, Come out and see us. World Goth Day at the Empress Theater in Vallejo from 11 to 6 for the vendors and then 5 to 8 for the bands. We're going to be looking for you. You better be there. (laughs) And remember, if you're going to be paranormally active, always use protection. 